Hi all and welcome back to the Chronicles AFC Daily with me, Harry Sibiu. Apologies in advance um, regarding my voice. I've got, I don't know if I've got a cold, I don't know if I've got hay fever, I don't know if I've got a bit of both, but I am as bunged up as they come. Uh, so you have to excuse me if I cough in the middle of this, if I sneeze or anything like that, I do apologise. But I wanted to get a video out and a podcast out today, of course. Now, let's start with Football. London's senior reporter, James Benj. He has told us that a number of sources have claimed making any sort of progress in negotiations with Arsenal Football Club is an agonisingly slow process. Not what you want to hear at the start of one of our most important transfer windows of the last decade. But James Benj went on to say that there were lots of senior figures, but perhaps not enough people on the ground to get things moving and hammer out the specifics. And we know there is no permanent head of recruitment in place and no technical director. And that means increased pressure on Raul Senlehi and, of course, Unai Emery. No need to panic just yet, because to be honest, the window in which you can register players isn't even open yet. However, it's an issue that's been raised by a number of sources and something that Arsenal need to deal with sooner rather than later, you feel. When asked about his future over the weekend, Ryan Fraser has been quoted as saying, I ain't got a clue. I don't know myself, so there's no point thinking about it. Wherever I'll be, I'll be. I don't know what is happening. I'm not just saying that. Now, the Scotland international has just a year left on his Bournemouth deal, meaning he could be available for a cut price fee. I watched him live on Saturday, and despite Scotland's opponents being Cyprus, he didn't really pull up any trees, and I know it's just one game, but for me, he's not the solution. I think there are better players out there than Ryan Fraser, I think. Even though he is in the last year of his contract, I say cut price fee, but there's still going to be that Premier League premium on that. So I think that we could get better um, from abroad for a lot less. And if we're talking about us having such a restricted transfer budget, then I don't think that spending, you know, 25, 30 million on Ryan Fraser is the way forward, in my opinion. There are no further updates on Yannick Carrasco, so it's pretty much as we were on yesterday's edition. Reports doing the rounds that the personal terms have been agreed, but Carrasco and his representatives have not named Arsenal as the club they're negotiating with, so I'd remain cautious at this stage. And I'd rather Carrasco than Fraser. There you go, I've said it. I think he's a far better player. I think he's played at a higher level. Agreed, he went off to China, and that was a move that I could not get my head around at the time, and I still don't understand why he did it now. Um, but there's no question that he was a fantastic player. Remember that goal uh, for Monaco against us, and, and I've seen him countless times for Atletico uh, put in great shifts and do a fantastic job. Very, very talented footballer, and I'd welcome him with open arms at Arsenal. Another player we're being linked with is Jordan Veratu from Fiorentina. The former Aston Villa man was thought to be on his way to Napoli this summer, but it appears Arsenal may, and I use the term may, uh, look to hijack that move. Uh, I'm sure Arsenal could offer a better salary than uh, Napoli, but the problem being Veratu has specified he'd like to play in the Champions League. I'm hoping to catch up with someone a little bit later on today who could give us the inside track on Veratu, uh, but I won't reveal that just yet. Uh, once it's recorded and ready to go out, then uh, of course I'll reveal that. Arsenal are reportedly close to sealing a deal for the Brazilian starlet Gabriel Martinelli. It's thought that the Gunners have agreed a fee of approximately £6.5 million with his club Ituano FC. Martinelli is regarded as one of Brazil's brightest young stars and from a country who've never ceased to produce top class players, that's surely a good sign, isn't it? Martinelli would not require a work permit, which has often been a problem when signing young Brazilians because he qualifies for an Italian passport via his father. Uh, so that makes things a lot easier, a lot simpler. According to inside football, Serie A giants AC Milan are considering a move for Arsenal midfielder Lucas Torreira. The Uruguayan has impressed during his first season in the Premier League and with Milan reportedly about to appoint Marco Giampaolo as their new boss, they are hopeful that he can convince Torreira his future lies in Italy. A player we were linked with throughout this past season, particularly after our European, uh, European tie against Rennes, is uh, their star is Smiler Saar. It's thought that the French outfit have slapped a 35 million euro price tag on the wide man. They'll only accept cash and will not entertain any sort of swap deal. 
Now, remember all that Aubameyang to China talk. That seems to have gone away. But it does appear the 340 k per week offer that was supposedly on the table was indeed genuine. Lots of outlets today are reporting this figure. Um, and, you know, it, you can understand why that would be difficult uh, to turn your nose up at. Um, but it's still not as much as Mesut Ozil earns. Well, hey, uh, there you go. So that's the roundup of stories from today. That's what's doing the rounds. That's what I've read this morning. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the stories I've mentioned. Leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and leave us a review on iTunes if you're listening via audio. Big thanks to every single one of you. Apologies again for my croaky voice, the fact that my voice keeps breaking up. I am a little bit under the weather. Um, but we're going to keep the Chronicles AFC daily rolling uh, as you do. And we'll be back tomorrow with another edition. Until then, ciao.